What up, world? It's a canon, aka the Tax D Hero, and you are now tuned into Investors Conversation. Whether you're a newbie or a novice, let's get to it. All right, and my name is Mika Coleman. I'm with Leverage, Tax Deed, and Overage Education. And today's topic is Airbnb versus rentals and tax deeds. And I personally do not do either. I'm more of a wholesaler, but today uh, I'm gonna have uh, Canon talk about Airbnb versus rentals because he takes most of his tax deeds and he rents them out and now he's doing Airbnb. So I'm gonna ask him a few questions because of what we're doing investor conversation. So I'm having him come on and talk so that we can talk about the different strategies that you can utilize when you're buying tax deeds. So Canon, tell me how it's going, like, you know, what made you decide to get into Airbnb and like, how was your rentals and kind of like, tell me what's the difference between the two and how they've been working out for you. Okay. Um, for, I would say first and uh, foremost, it's very, very similar. So if you are a landlord or you've ever been a landlord, then you understand just the, it's the structure, it's the premise of just how it works. Um, the only difference I would say is typically when you're doing rental homes, rental properties or whatever it may be, those are typically long-term um, and, you know, the price is set and there's a lot of rules that go along with when you're being the landlord and, and, and rental, especially in today's, you know, climate, uh, you know, skyrocket, everything is inflated. So, you know, it's just a lot of laws being pushed towards that. Um, with the Airbnb, you got to think you can change your prices at any moment. You know, you could you could rent it for the day, you could rent it for the weekend, you could tell someone, hey, it's gonna be a two, three day minimum minimum when you book. Um, and you know, it's it's a quick turnover. You're not you're not having someone that's constantly in your property if you you know for 30 days on end, six months on in, a year or or longer. It's, you know, it's literally for a day or a couple of days or a weekend, you know. So tell me this when you um when you do your Airbnbs. Mm -hmm. um do you like well let's just talk about the tax deed first so after you purchase the tax deed i just found this out you guys because i've never invested in tennessee that there's a one-year redemption period right. so when you um buy your property from the tax deed auction do you basically fix it up like what do you do like kind of walk me through the process of like I guess it's the same, huh? As though yeah. if you were going to do a rental and an Airbnb, because I know you said you just started trying that out. How has it worked? So tell me the rentals versus the Airbnbs and how has it worked out for you as far as like, you know, the numbers, is it about the same or is it, do you find yourself? No, getting... it's definitely, it's definitely more money in Airbnb okay. uh, by a long shot, because again, you know, typically when you, uh, you know, not to keep repeating myself, when you're doing like a rental and you have a contract with um, a tenant, uh, that contract is mostly based, year. Yeah, it's mostly, yeah. And, it, and it's, you know, it's fixed already. Um, as far as the Airbnb, you know, I can literally rent it today for a thousand dollars and tomorrow for $1,500, you know, um, let's say, you know, you live somewhere close or to, you know, a sports event or, some type of event in your city, town, metropolitan, or wherever it may be, just based off of that event and people coming in and wanting to have a place to stay, hey, that's that's prime real estate. So you can charge whatever you want. So whereas you may get, you know, fifteen hundred dollars or more for for a typical month to month rent, um, I could charge you two, three thousand dollars for that one weekend, you know. Um, wow. So you definitely going to double up your money and you got to keep in mind when you purchase a tax deed sale, you own it free and clear. So you go fix it up the same way you would a rental or even better, you know, and um, that's going to bring you that revenue in. And I definitely would think that, you know, that is the future and has been the future for a long time of, uh, of you know, just properties and, and renting. I think a lot of people are getting away from long term rentals and doing more short term rentals just because it's more money to be made. Yeah, you just, I, a light bulb just went off in my head. I was like, oh, an aha moment. Um, I know like where I am and the price points that I've been getting mm -hmm. don't get a lot of properties, but it sounds like where you're at, you do get a lot of properties. I know in Dallas, I get a lot of land, especially if I'm in the inner city. Right. And when I go further out, of course I do, but I had an aha moment. I'm like, so wait a minute. Is it safe to say that possibly in one weekend you can get all your money back from a tax deed? Yeah, absolutely. And, and let me say this. Um, 
even if you're someone that's, that's watching this and you never even invested in a tax deed or you're thinking about it, let's say you have a primary home, um, you might have a mortgage or you know, uh, anything, you can still Airbnb your, Airbnb your property. It's just all about your comfort zone. Do you, do you feel good about having people that, I, mean, I would say this is a pro and a con with having an Airbnb. Okay, how sorry. good how good do you feel about someone coming in and out of your property a lot of different bodies a lot of different people you know opposed to a just one rental where it's just typically going to be who's on your lease you know that right. will be that will be the difference um but it's all about what your comfort zone is yeah i like that though i'm like especially because you're in tennessee tennessee's hot i can't remember what county oh, yeah. oh, but we're gonna oh, talk about your yeah well i mean i'm right here in the Nashville 615 area yeah, so that's pretty hot. So yeah. you probably could buy a tax deed and rent it out for like two or three weekends and like literally got your entire investment back from the purchase if, of the tax any, deed. Anybody just, just go go and look at the top cities. You said Dallas, Na uh, Nashville. Look at the top cities where people are moving to. Yeah, you know? but and, I would think that the tax deeds are kind of expensive. I know, well, it's, it's, I, it's hit or miss because I didn't I didn't participate in the last auction in Dallas with the auction before I was like what I was like I missed it but somebody got one for like a lot for 2500 which we're going to talk about tiny houses and lots in the next thing but I was just like dang and I was right. like I've been doing Dallas for a long time I haven't won anything in Dallas because most of the time the stuff goes for 20 or 30 but it really depends on what day you're at the auction. Cause I was right. like, damn, nobody was at the auction that day. Like it was like, it went so quick. I always tell, oh, sorry, sorry to cut you. I always tell people that like, you know, don't be discouraged. You know, sometimes you might go to two, three, four, five, six tax details, but when you get that one, you'll know and you'll appreciate it. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anything else you want to add? Um, in regards to Airbnb versus rent, uh, long-term rentals with tax deeds? Um, I would just say that, uh, you know, just take everything in moderation um, and make sure that you've dotting all your I's, crossing all your T's, you know, um, and just go out there and do it, you know, because it, it's plenty of money for anybody and everybody, you know, you can, you just gotta be a look. I would say going in, you know, being in 2022, going into 2023, the, the key word should just be innovative. You know, it's so many ways to make money now. And we're talking about real estate because that just happens to be the game that we love and, and we we flourish at and, and we and we enjoy it. But um, mm -hmm. you know, there are so many ways to make money with real estate and properties. And like I said, you know, I'm doing tiny homes. I I'm tapping into markets and doing things that I've never even thought about, you know, two, three years ago. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Um, I had I had a thought really quick. What did I want to say? You were saying innovation, and I thought about something, and I forgot that quick. Sorry, I should have wrote it down. What is it? What what you got? I know. I'm trying to think of it really quick because we were talking about um, when you said innovation, and I was just thinking like, well, you just kind of like it just blew my mind. Like I just had the light bulb go off. I'm like, dang, I just never thought about Airbnb, and literally, if you're in a a good area, yeah. Literally. A good metropolitan area is, is yeah. one of the, one of the best ways to go because it's just going to be a lot of money that's going to always flow. Oh, that's what I was going to ask. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to ask you, what's the average cost for fix up for like, okay, what's the average cost you pay? Mm -hmm. And then what's the average cost of uh, fix up? Because you know, I don't do fix up flips. I wholesale everything. Right. Um, I, I, I could never say. I'm going to just be honest with you because I typically go into a tax D sale. See, I, I I invest a little different. I don't really, I'm not gonna say I don't care about the price, but like, I don't mind paying a little over just because I buy and hold. Your strategy, yes, that yeah. makes sense. That you makes you wholesale, so again, yes, you purchase, you know, you, you, you're a little more tight on what you're trying to do because, you know, you're gonna wholesale it, right? Mm -hmm. Me, I typically like to try to buy wholesale it and give myself more I mean not wholesale I, I I give myself that option to wholesale if I choose but I typically like to try to keep a property for like at least two years you know because therefore I can rent it out um, Airbnb it and then if I decide to sell it uh, wholesale it or whatever I still have that option so okay. you know I'm I, that, that's where I'm kind of mastering the game is where I'm, I want to give myself more exit strategies i want to i want to you know a lot of people say you only need a plan a i like to have a plan a b and c you know 
Yeah, no, I don't know why people say you only have to have one plan. I always, no. that's one thing I do tell my students. There's all, you need a plan A and a plan B. Yeah. Um, before you even like go to the auction or whatever you decide you want to invest you you know because you you know in investing you never know like you said you got that you probably had one plan for those two lots mm -hmm. but you only found out that you had one so hopefully you had a plan a and you had a plan b like Absolutely. your plan b is to hold buy and hold you know i don't know what your plan a was but right. it's good to have you know options period right right, right. You know, any savvy investor will tell you to have option so yeah and, and and we'll talk about it in our next few episodes but you know i'll talk about the importance of just scaling being able to scale your business and scale your properties and scale your land and stuff like that because once you know situations like that say let's say something slows up you know um something else got to be able to pick up and, and, and continue to you know pick up the weight yeah yeah well, I guess that will conclude Airbnb versus rentals with tax deeds. If hey. you have anything else to say. Nah, man, let's just keep the ball rolling. I hope that, um, you know, the listeners are listening. I hope they're taking notes. And if y'all have any type of questions, please contact us. Please comment. Please like. Please subscribe. Yes, and please comment. I love comments. For sure. Thank you guys for listening. Tax deed hero, we out. <laughs>